We are now at Roslyn Avenue. And this was another entrance exit right here. And this is a remnant of what's left. Uh, I don't know exactly what it leads to. It's kind of just like an alleyway here. But uh, on this side, it's just completely overgrown, maybe a residential area. But you can still see a little bit on this side. We are now in Garden City, New York. And where these power lines are is a stretch of the Vanderbilt Parkway, Motor Parkway. And it went right through here. Let's see if I could see any uh, remnants around. But right in front of me is Jericho Turnpike, Route 25. Suffolk County, it's called Middle Country Road. But this uh, was a toll booth here. And the toll booth, this is the one that still exists and we're gonna go to it next. But here, look, you could see a curb, an old curb right there. And if you look here, I mean, look at these bricks, this is, uh, not a normal dead end, the way this is kind of set up here. And the reason, of course, is this is a road, and there was a station here. Well, that's really uh, neat that there's a curve there, still. Uh, yeah, let's go take a look at the toll house. Here we are at the Garden City Chamber of Commerce. This little, cute little hut here. This is what the toll booths used to look like. You'd ride under here and come out and you'd pay the toll. And they all look like this. Designed especially that way. And we are only about, uh, Oh, I'd say a mile or two to the uh, southwest of our last location. And that's where this used to be. So there you go. Now you know what a motor parkway toll booth looks like. Okay, we are now at the next stop in the town of Syosset. A road called Clinton Road. And right here, they actually named the street after him, Vanderbilt Court. It's just a dead end road, just leads to one house. But that, and you can see the power lines kind of diagonally uh, follow where the motor parkway used to be. And there used to be a toll booth right at at that little intersection of the dead end. And that was the next stop. Okay, we are now in Eisenhower Park in the middle of Nassau County, near the Nassau Coliseum, where Roosevelt Field used to be. A lot of history here, and the motor parkway used to run through where this park is now. It's actually really close to where I am. It's right across the road here. It's not, uh, it wasn't parallel with the road, it was a little bit to the north of this road. Uh, it's a golf course now, so I can't really walk on there. But, uh, it was over there. And at this intersection, right here, where those traffic lights are, that was another toll plaza, the Stewart Avenue toll plaza. 
not much to see here because it's all been reworked. There's no remnants to look at, unfortunately, but my goal is to stop at every toll plaza, so I have to stop. So I'll tell a quick story. Uh, a lot of oh, motor parkway where it was, what we just passed, runs almost parallel with the Northern State Parkway, and that's not a coincidence. Uh, actually, in the 1920s, when they were uh, planning and building the Northern State Parkway, they suggested buying Motor Parkway and just using that because they already had the right of way. It, it would be simpler, but they didn't like the price that he was offering, Vanderbilt was offering. So uh, rather than negotiate, Robert Moses, who was in charge, told him not to do it because he said in 10 years he's going to give it away anyway because nobody uses it. And he was he was right. He actually gave it away in 1938 for back taxes. And uh, But just to... Uh, out of spite because he was upset that Vanderbilt would lower the price he said he's going to build Northern Parkway as much as he can alongside Motor Parkway so that he can go out of Motor Parkway will go out of business faster and I'm sure it helped to contribute to that but the interesting story uh, Moses did uh, not like to be messed with he liked to get his way in a lot of things, uh, he wasn't a politician. He was a, an architect, but he sort of had the attitude of, of a politician. Uh, he's able to uh, work with the right people and get his way. And he built up a lot of the highway system and bridge system in uh, New York. But anyway, on to the next spot. Well, here we are, folks, in almost in Bethpage. I don't know if this is actually considered Bethpage, but it's pretty close. Kind of the border of uh, Hicksville, Bethpage. Massapequa was a little bit further to the south. But we're in eastern Nassau County. And this, in the old racing days, before 1911, this was the, the last entrance exit for Motor Park. And here, you can see where it used to be, right here. Right with these power lines. I like to put the power lines there because they already had the right of way. It made it easier. And you could also see it on this side a little bit of a, a road there that was another part of it and somewhere along this road there was a toll plaza and you'd have to pay your toll so there's one more stop in Nassau County and that would have been the, the next stop would be the end of the race that they had for those two years. And we'll be there shortly. And it was right here. This road is now an apartment complex. Just power lines over here. Definitely a theme. They definitely lined the power lines where <laughs> Motor Parkway used to be. And it makes sense because it gave them right away, like I said. But it was right around here where the end of the race was. And I, the, the big 1909 uh, and 1910 races. Of course, they wanted to do it longer, but uh, too many, two mechanics died and too many people, little farmers, were complaining that their races were scaring their animals and too much pushback. So they ended the races but kept the highway. But this was the end of the race right here, right before the Suffolk County border here in Bethpage. Straight ahead 
is Beth Page Park. Here's the intersection of Route 110 and Spagnoli Road. And it was here, right around where this bank is, that there was another toll station. The first uh, of the Suffolk County ones, the 1911 to 1938 uh, section that was built. Now at this point in Suffolk County, like I said, it was only 16 feet wide a set of 22, so it got more narrow at this point. Uh, they never had to use it for a race anyway, but this is where it kept going. I don't know if it lines up exactly with this uh, empty area here, but I know the toll booth was just north of this intersection on uh, the side of the road. So. Here we are at Deer Park Road and Motor Parkway. This was another exit, entrance, toll plaza. And of course it didn't look anything like this today. Much wider than 16 feet like it was back then. But I noticed on the side here is a little clearing. And every now and then you can see patches of cement and this is has rocks but over here and I'm thinking that this was a ramp to get on and off because they all had ramps that were on the side and usually on some kind of incline so I'm thinking this was the entrance ramp if you were on Deer Park to get on Motor Parkway heading east if you were heading north on Deer Park Road so this is pretty cool. And the next stop is Comac. This is Harn Road, and there's Motor Parkway over there. Now Harn Road was actually a spur that they built later on as part of the uh, parkway to uh, in order to try to get more traffic but there was a toll here also but before I go there I noticed some other uh, nice relic down here this the sewer says the bell system and that hasn't been around for a long time so that must be pretty old <laughs> Pretty sure that was uh, dismantled in the late 90s. Well, here's the intersection here. And somewhere along here would have been the toll plaza. Here is one of the busier sections of the still existing still used Motor Parkway here in Suffolk County. It's Washington Avenue and Motor Parkway. There's a lot of businesses over here and uh, it's always a good amount of traffic, especially in the late afternoons like now. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of businesses uh, over here and I'm sure Vanderbilt would be proud that so many people are using his road still, at least in this part. But there's no evidence here of uh, the toll booth and the entrance and exits that used to exist here. Completely wiped out by a lot of uh, more modern construction. And now, just one more stop, folks. Well, here we are again at the eastern terminus of Vanderbilt's Motor Parkway. At this intersection, which is a uh, Rosevale Avenue, the Motor Parkway, there was a, the last or the first, depending on which way you're going, uh, entrance and exit toll station. 
And I actually used to know someone that lived in this house here. I've been inside it. Uh, I don't know who lives there now, but when I was growing up, I uh, actually ran on a cross-country high school team with a boy, or a, he's a man now, that lived there. And here's where the road ended. It actually ended, and there was a restaurant here where these, these houses are called the Petit Trainon. It was a fancy little, uh, I don't think it was a hotel, but it was just a restaurant that surrounded Lake Ronkonkoma. And if you saw one of my, my past videos, I, I showed all the, the many uh, restaurants and hotels that surrounded the lake. Well, this was definitely uh, the most expensive one. This it was at the end, as I said, of the Motor Parkway. And it, if you made it this far, you know, they, <laughs> you treat yourself to some nice food, I guess. This is where it was. And I see this really old rock, uh, stone, I can't call it a fence really, uh, wall. And I think, I'm pretty sure this was part of it. It just really doesn't fit with anything else in this neighborhood. And it looks a little too fancy for the house that's there. <laughs> and it's definitely old. It's all chipped apart and everything. So I'm guessing this was where the restaurant was. And right beyond those trees is the lake, but you, you can't see it because of the trees. But it's there. And I hope you enjoyed this video, exploring the entire length of Vanderbilt's Great Parkway. And, well, in concluding, I don't think I discussed what happened at the end. In 1938, the road was not making any money. Vanderbilt owed a lot of taxes. And so the state made him a deal that they would forget the taxes if they give him the road and all the property that is uh, entailed with the road. And so in 1938, gave it to the count, to the state or the, the county, I, I'm not sure, but they you know, kept one section of it at the end and the rest of it wound up broken up and and sold and they made a pretty decent amount of money on it and that's the story of the motor parkway and I thank you for listening and if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe thank you very much for watching